Here is a chart showing the intensity of extinction events in the last 500 million years. The high spikes are the notable Big Five extinction events, the five largest extinction events in the history of the planet. The first one, 444 million years ago, the late Ordovician extinction event. The second one, 360 million years ago, the late Devonian. The third and the most severe one, the Permian-Triassic extinction event, 250 million years ago. The fourth one, the end triassic 200 million years ago. And the fifth, and the most well-known, the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event, the end of the dinosaurs, 65 million years ago. A mass extinction event is defined by a widespread and rapid decrease in biodiversity on a global scale. At least three-fourths of all species lost in a few million years, driven by a variety of natural causes. In other videos within this series, it has been presented that numerous species of animals have gone extinct within a short period of time due to human activity. The current biodiversity loss has been dubbed as the beginning of the sixth mass extinction, called the Holocene extinction, or Anthropocene extinction, as it is driven by human activity. But how much of an impact do we have as a single species? What is causing biodiversity loss? And does it really indicate that a mass extinction event is currently unfolding as we speak? Species go extinct all the time. It is part of the natural process of evolution through natural selection. The loss of species due to extinction and the creation of new ones through speciation work hand in hand to shape natural biodiversity. This natural rate of species loss is known as the background extinction rate. Since the 1500s, plants and animals have been disappearing at a much faster rate than the expected background rate, and this trend is only accelerating. From the early 1900s to the present day, the extinction rate is estimated to be up to 1,000 times faster than the background rate, and this is likely an underestimation, because countless undiscovered species might have been driven to extinction before we could even describe them, and the populations of numerous species have been drastically reduced, pushing them close to extinction. A report showed that from 1970 to 2018, wildlife populations experienced an average relative decline of 70%, Freshwater populations have been particularly impacted, with an average decline of 83% during the same period of time. Certain groups and species suffered more than others, such as tigers, leopards, cheetahs, and lions. Big cats' populations saw a major decline. At the current rate of decline, these species could disappear within the next 10 to 15 years. The African elephant population is also taking a nosedive, and if this trend continues, elephants could cease to exist in just a little over a decade. Moreover, oceanic shark and ray populations have been decimated by overfishing, dropped by 71% and are approaching the point of no return. Many species are now threatened with extinction. Humans are a unique predator because we regularly prey on other adult apex predators, particularly in marine environments. Species like blue whales, right whales, bluefin tuna, and over 50 species of sharks and rays, including the great white, are vulnerable to hunting pressures from the fishing industry. These novel man-made threats are virtually non-existent in the millions of years of their evolution. Approximately 70% of all megafauna species are in decline, and it could take several million years for their populations to recover. Among all vertebrate species, 41% of amphibians, 25% of mammals, 21% of reptiles, and 14% of birds are threatened with extinction. Invertebrates, including insects, are also experiencing global declines in both abundance and diversity. 
At the current rate, an estimated 40% of all insect species could go extinct within a few decades. Recent studies revealed staggering declines in insect biomass in Germany and Puerto Rico in the past few decades. Habitat destruction and excessive pesticide use are believed to be the primary drivers of these population declines. The rapid decline of insects is particularly alarming because they play crucial roles in the ecosystems. They serve as the main food source for countless other species and are essential pollinators, contributing to the production of 75% of our food crops. The disappearance of insects could lead to the collapse of the entire food chain, with cascading impacts that would affect all life on this planet. Global biodiversity and human population growth unsurprisingly have negative correlation. As one rises, the other falls. The global human population has been steadily growing for over 10,000 years, but experienced a sudden spike in the 18th century. Our population exploded, grew more than tenfold in just 300 years, and has only continued to grow ever since. Since 1900, the output of the global economy has increased by more than 30-fold. This accelerated expansion of human activity has modified the surface of the planet on a magnitude and rate unseen in tens of millions of years. Our impact is global, and the speed of change is instantaneous in terms of geological timescales. More than a third of the planet's land surface is currently used for food production, primarily for livestock. As the human population continues to grow, the expansion of agricultural land use will also increase. According to a WWF report, 60% of biodiversity loss can be attributed to just one aspect. The absolutely immense scale of feed crop cultivation required to raise livestock in meat production. The meat and dairy sector has been credited as a significant contributor and the leading cause in biodiversity loss. To put things into perspective, in 2018, out of the total biomass of mammals on Earth, 60% consisted of livestock, cattle and pigs, while humans accounted for 36%. Only the remaining 4% represented wild mammals. That includes all the whales and dolphins in the sea, all the elephants, and basically every furry animal on the planet. For birds, only 30% of the biomass came from wild populations, while 70% was made up of farmed poultry, mostly chickens. Vertebrate life on this planet is dominated by a few species of farmed animals and a single species that feeds on them. The size and continued growth of the human population, accompanied with per capita consumption growth over the past two centuries, are regarded as the underlying causes of extinction. The Industrial Revolution can be seen as the triggering point of the Holocene extinction. However, even before that, humans have been responsible for the extinction of various animal species since prehistoric times. The Quaternary Megafauna Extinction which occurred from 132,000 to 1,000 years ago, is an extinction event that resulted in the loss of at least 178 species of the world's largest mammals. This extinction event led to a collapse in faunal density and diversity across the globe. Prehistoric human activities have been attributed to this extinction event. The megafauna extinction coincided with the migration pattern of modern humans from Africa, to Eurasia, to Indo-Malaya and Australia, and then from East Asia, to North and South America. In every continent where humans arrived and settled, large animals simply disappeared shortly after. Wherever humans go, extinction follows with the casualties being proportionately higher the further away these animals were from Africa. 
This indicates that animals that did not evolve alongside hominids in their ecosystems were a lot more vulnerable to human hunting pressures. Some consider the quaternary megafauna extinction as the beginning of the ongoing Holocene extinction. But some argue that these are separate events, since there are notable differences between the two. The rate of biodiversity loss since the Industrial Revolution is significantly faster and with greater magnitude. It now almost universally affects the global biodiversity. A remarkably larger portion of life forms are now also threatened, not just large animals. This current extinction event has been labelled as the most serious environmental threat to the persistence of civilization, and for good reason. It's irreversible and its acceleration is certain due to the fast growth in human numbers, and primarily in consumption rate. We as a species are such efficient consumers of natural resources that we disrupt the ecological balance of the planet. The disruption of ecosystems has been suggested to have unpredictable consequences with dire impacts on life on Earth. A planet with destroyed biodiversity and depleted natural resources cannot sustain anything for long, let alone the demands of billions of humans with highly consumptive behaviors. Now that both the quaternary megafauna extinction and the current biodiversity crisis can be attributed to human activities, it might appear that this problem is wired into us as a species, since we were hunter-gatherers, our desire to gouge out every drop of natural resources within our reach has already been adversely impacting the planet's biodiversity. Now that there's more of us and we became more resource-hungry, our impact exploded. It's as if humans are simply predisposed to be the instrument of mass extinction. Something akin to disastrous natural phenomena like the Chicxulub asteroid or the Permian supervolcanoes. A powerful force set to bring doom to countless living organisms on this planet. It is statistically sound and also plainly apparent that the Holocene extinction is currently happening and it is accelerating at record-breaking speeds. With the current rate of biodiversity loss, it has been roughly estimated that we are on the course of losing 75% of all species on Earth within just a few thousands of years. This is an exceptionally rapid loss of biodiversity, much faster than the previous Big Five mass extinction events, including the sudden catastrophic asteroid impact of the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. Will we be a part of the surviving 25%? Well, it's hard to say, but I think of it like this. As the global biodiversity continues to decline, ecosystem functions will fail and productivity will drop. This will create global famine and the expansion of dead zones of inhospitable barren lands will force billions of people to migrate. Mass migrations will create geopolitical chaos. Riots and wars will ensue, killing many. If these ordeals don't kill us off, then small numbers of surviving humans will live on the rubble of humanity, alongside a few species of farm animals and other species with low metabolisms, those with lower demands for resources, are generalists, and mainly smaller in size. One thing is certain, modern civilization will collapse, and the progress humanity has achieved will be undone. But fortunately, the fate of our planet is not yet sealed. It is still possible to do course correction and avert the planet's biodiversity decay. The Holocene extinction will not become a mass extinction event if we start addressing the causes of biodiversity loss right now. Efforts to prevent further biodiversity loss have been made and signs of recovery have been observed. Atlantic cod was subjected to extreme overfishing practices in the 70s and 80s, and by 1992, the population fell to a critical 1% of historical levels. This caused the collapse of the largest cod fishery in the world. Fortunately, 
following a more than two decade long moratorium on Atlantic cod fishing by the Canadian government. The cod population began to recover and is expected to reach historical levels in less than a decade. The same can be said for a wide range of other species. Bald eagles were saved from extinction by extensive conservation efforts. Its population now soars at more than 71,000 breeding pairs, an exceptional recovery from less than 500 in 1963. In just over a century, commercial whaling has reduced the humpback whale population from 27,000 individuals to an appallingly low number of 450 individuals. In response to an international ban on commercial whaling, humpback whales have made a strong recovery. Its IUCN status greatly improved, having moved from endangered to vulnerable and in 2008 to least concern. The current population is estimated to be 93% of the historical population. These are some examples of great success we have achieved as a species in fulfilling our moral obligation in protecting the natural world. The survival of millions of species lies in our hands. Our actions have real impacts, and nature has the capacity to heal. These show us that once adequate protections are in place, wildlife populations will recover. And thankfully, Measures to protect biodiversity go hand in hand with climate change mitigation. Both of these problems have similar causes, and climate change affects all life on the planet as a whole. Unless we limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, climate change is likely going to become the dominant cause of biodiversity loss. To address both the climate emergency and avoid biodiversity collapse, changes on a global level must be made. Some key actions include stabilizing human population, curbing excess capitalism and consumerism, reducing the demand for meat, and increasing the number and size of terrestrial and marine protected areas. According to a 2022 study, at least 44% of Earth's terrestrial surface must be conserved to prevent major biodiversity losses. Around half of our land and ocean have to be ecologically protected for wildlife, with a focus on areas with high biodiversity and productivity. As of today, only 16% of our land and less than 10% of our ocean is protected. Although they have increased rapidly in the last decade, needless to say, we're still not doing nearly enough. Until now, species that receive the most conservation attention are some that are either an economic commodity or have widespread popular appeal. Lesser known species are often overlooked. Protective efforts to save species should be complete and indiscriminate, unaffected by human perceived values. And to achieve this, we need to do more than just conservation. The UN Convention on Biological Diversity has established a comprehensive set of goals and missions to address and mitigate biodiversity loss across the globe. It's called the Aichi Biodiversity Targets. These targets were set during a convention summit in Japan in 2010. They serve as a framework for countries and organizations to develop and implement strategies, policies, and actions beyond conservation to halt the decline of biodiversity and promote its sustainable use. But unfortunately, the world failed to meet these targets. After it saw its 10 years deadline, out of 20 targets proposed, not a single one was met. Only six were partially achieved. Without any actions, global biodiversity will continue to drop. For now, we still have time to stop this, but our window of opportunity is rapidly closing. The more species we lose, the faster ecosystem functions will fail and the harder it will be to fix them. With the current trajectory, it is certain that the planets will see its sixth mass extinction event, driven by human greed and ignorance. As of now, a new global framework to reduce biodiversity loss has been drafted by the UN. 21 targets have been proposed for 2030, aimed to protect and restore natural ecosystems, 
and create sustainable global supply chains for the well-being of our species. It is imperative that we do not fail this one, for the fate of millions of species on the planet and the continuation of our civilization as we know it depend on our success in achieving these targets. Only with these transformative changes can we bend the curve enough and halt this ongoing Holocene extinction.